Hello guys and welcome to my office. This is the first time actually that I invite you to my office. Uh, today I'm going to start solving some problems for moment of inertia and it's a really basic problem. I'm just going to calculate the moment of inertia of a rectangular area but uh, follow it because this is the basis for more complicated problems. I really and strongly recommend you to follow this problem. Okay, let's start then. So as I said, what we're going to be doing today is calculating the moment of inertia with respect to of a rectangular section and if you remember the theory for moment of inertia the moment of inertia can be calculated with respect to several points or different points in this case we're going to do it of a rectangular section b times h and we're going to do it with respect to the centroid of the section meaning we are going to be doing centroidal moment of inertia with respect to x and centroidal moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis. Now, when we were working with uh, centroids, uh, if you remember I told you that you can place your axis of reference wherever you want to, wherever you want to, and then I say okay, try to select that wherever you want to to be the easiest point. In my opinion, the easiest point for centroid I'm talking, it was that point wherever you place the whole figure in the first quadrant and it's as close as possible of the axis. Yes, you could do that for centroid. But here, you have to place your axis of reference wherever you are calculating your moment of inertia. And that's one of the most important things that you have to remember. So, because we are doing it with respect to the centroid and we know where the centroid of the rectangular shape is, which is at yes at the center so we're going to place our system of reference of our axis of reference at the center the next thing that you have to know and of course is very important is remembering what is the formula for moment of inertia a moment of inertia is no other thing that the integral of y squared dA and moment of inertia with respect to y is the integral of x squared dA now another difference and another thing that students uh, get confused all the time, at least during my test, my exams, is that uh, they come from centroid and now they move to moment of inertia and in centroid, when you calculate the centroid in x, is the integral of x dA. But in this case, because it's moment of inertia, this is x and this is y. This is y and this is x. So be very careful with that because that, that might look li really simple but you have no idea how many times I have seen that error in my exams. So let's do that. Moment of inertia is that I'm going to explain you one method which in my opinion is the simplest method and this is the one that I explain to my students. It might not be the one that you are used to or it might be longer or shorter, I don't know, but this is the one that I'm going to explain you. What I tell my students is the following. Look at this value here or that variable. If you are measuring that variable y in this direction, I'm going to choose a differential of area that is going to be perpendicular to that y like that. If that is going to be my differential, my y, then this here is dy and this is going to be my differential of area. In the case of a rectangle it's really easy because these two lines are parallel and this distance is b, so my differential of area is going to be b times dy everywhere. b is constant everywhere dy. Now, the rest is just nothing, it's just plug and chug. Integral of y squared dA, but dA is d, so I'm going to put that here b dy and the other important thing are the limits of integration which is the other the, the, the only other thing that you can mess up in this program because the integral is really easy so usually I go to the classroom and I ask okay between what and what and the students the first thing that the students say all the time is between 0 and h well at least they say 0 and h and not 0 to b yes I'm measuring y so Remember what we are doing basically. We are getting a differential of area and we are sweeping the whole shape with that differential of area from this point to that point. But if my axis is here, the center of my axis, this is not zero. Zero is here. This point is negative. And negative what? Well, this is the centroid, so this distance is h divided by 2. And also is this distance h divided by 2 because the centroid of the rectangular shape is located there. So basically what we are doing here is going from negative h divided by 2 to positive h divided by 2. Once you have that, solve the integral, this b is constant, is constant, take it outside, integral of y squared dy, I'm sorry, 
from negative h half to h half this is a square remember this is the simplest integral this to the third two plus one three divided by three b y to the third divided by three between negative h two and h two and now we are going to substitute only these limits here so i sub zero x is going to be equal to b times h divided by two to the third divided by three remember this is this y minus now evaluated evaluated at this limit b times negative h to the third cube h squared to the third divided by three this is this limit this is this limit uh, this is uh, b times h to the third divided by two to the third is eight eight times three is twenty four negative to the third is negative times negative is going to be positive and b h cube two to the third is eight also eight times three twenty four and twenty four twenty four one twenty four plus one twenty four b h cube divided by twelve five sub zero x equal b h cube divided by twelve remember the units whatever units we have here is going to be units of length of course to the fourth because it's a units times units to the third units to the fourth if we are working in feet feet to the fourth if we're working with meters meters to the four centimeters to the four and so on now if you compare that with the tables that you find in the books this is exactly what we get bhq divided by 12 and this little dot here represents the centroid and as you can see the x and y axis are located at the centroid okay i hope that you enjoyed this video please follow it and understand it now we're gonna go and we're gonna move to the next step which is just calculating the centroid the uh, moment of inertia of the same figure with respect to the y axis wait for you in the next video please keep watching